the Smitty Door of the Board of Franklin County Commissioners, Wednesday, May 11, 2022. Janet, do call? Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dunn? Yes. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Wehmeyer? Present. You uh, please stand for the left pledge of allegiance to the standing for the application. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. I'm Chaplain Brian Mann from Advent Health. I have a short verse and a, and a uh, invocation. Proverbs 19:21 says, "Many plans." are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for these servants, and I ask that you would allow for them to serve the people and yourself. Lead us, guide us, and we ask for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Correspondence, Dirk. Yeah, Christy has a proclamation. If you want to come up, that'd be great. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I do have a, a proclamation. It's 22 02, and it is in honor of EMS Week, which starts May 15th. Uh, so the 2022 theme is EMS Rising to the Challenge. It's particularly meaningful now. <coughs> remind people that everyday EMS is faced with so many new challenges in our lives and yet uh, our crews still continue to rise above them. They continue to respond, support, and care for the needs of our community. Okay, Christy, I'll, I'll read the proclamation then. Or do you want to read the proclamation? I'll let you read it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I do that? Okay. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public, and whereas the members of the Franklin County EMS and other emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas the emergency medical services system in Franklin County consists of emergency medical dispatchers, first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, and whereas the members of these emergency medical teams engage in multiple hours of specialized training and continue education to enhance the skills necessary to care for ill and injured and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of these highly trained frontline professionals. Therefore, be it resolved that the Franklin County Board of Commissioners formally designates May 15th through May 21st, 2022 as Emergency Medical Services with the theme EMS Rising to the Challenge and encourage the citizens and communities of Franklin County to honor our residents that week. I'll entertain a motion to approve this proclamation. Don't, who is it? Okay. <laughs> that was so fast. <laughs> Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes, I was early. I took donuts to them this morning. Thank you very much. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Dunn? Definitely. Thank, Thank you, Christy. You. Hey, Christy, stick around for just a sec. Um, I would just just want to say a few words about EMS. Um, you know, you, you really stop and think about what they do, and certainly the same can be said for law enforcement, but, but the nature of the calls that they have to go to. I mean, here within the last couple of years, just for example, you know, our family lost someone to a car wreck. Um, 
that's the sort of thing that EMS has to do all the time. So what is for a lot of families, like among the worst things they'll ever have to go through, you guys do on a daily, I mean, almost daily, weekly, monthly basis. And, and I can't, when you really think about the, just the psychological toll that that has to take, like they, they deserve all the praise that we can heap on them. And so certainly, um, I mean, you know I appreciate you, Christy, but I appreciate your staff, um, all of our first responders here in Franklin County, and those that do it everywhere, because that is a really tough job. So, so thank you for that, and, and please pass that along to your staff. I will, thank you. You're welcome. And then, I, uh, little lighter note, I sent them a picture of your new truck, the wrap on it. Yes. Like, do you want to tell them how, did your employees take well to that? Or? Uh, it was very well received. Uh, the truck looks amazing, and the crews are excited about getting our first ambulance in the same scheme. Cool. Not burgundy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what did you, were you guys pleased with how it turned out? Or? That's very cool. Yeah, who gets to drive it? We're going to have the captains driving it. We've got a, a couple more modifications to make on it and hope to have it in service for them uh, by the end of the month. Cool. Okay. So you'll, you should see it out and about town responding to calls. Roy, you want me to put you behind the wheel of it? Let you. Well, I might try it. Okay. Let's see if it goes muddy and all that sort of good stuff. <laughs> Anyway, it's a good looking truck. It is. And I'll just uh, reiterate what Derek said and appreciate everything that the EMS does for our county. And it's something we need to have, and what we have is top notch, and I really appreciate that. Thank Thanks, you. Christy. And any other comments uh, anybody wants to make? Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> I want to give one load to Janet. I'll get them both signed for you and then seal them. Any public comment today? No, sir. Okay, consent agenda is just approved the minutes uh, May 4th meeting. Anyone want to make a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll so move. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Tom, would you want to come up right now? Next item up for business is repealing and rescinding Franklin County resolution, resolution number 20-15, a resolution relating to the COVID-19 public health emergency. Thanks, Tom, for being here. Yep. Good morning. Um, it's been a long two years and two months now, uh, back in March 14th, 2020, we started our disaster declaration for the COVID response. Um, at that point in time, we were in the, I believe we were in the weekly, weekly, week to week. So we came back week to week. And then we went to a 60 day declaration. And then after we did a 60 day declaration, <coughs> we went to a non-expiring um, declaration. So as things have progressed and stuff like that, uh, case numbers in, in Franklin County have pretty much kind of stabilized, um, and we're actually working on ramping down operations for COVID. It's not that it's not going away or anything like that. It's that we're just normalizing our operation, and part of that normalizing that operation is to, you know, finally say that we are we're not necessarily in emergency man or emergency mode or disaster mode. So what this is is we're going to go ahead and in that disaster declaration, which is a big who are for us, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that we're going to be dealing with COVID for probably the rest of our lives, but it's just one of those things. It's, it's, it's a good, it's kind of a good moment and it's a kind of a bittersweet moment because we've been running so hard for so long that it, now it's kind of that, you kind of get that little bit of a, it's not a, fin it's not final or anything like that, but it's definitely there. How does that uh, affect the COVID response team, Derek? Is it uh, just going away for now? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't have any real effect on our COVID response team. I mean, I will tell you that, that I believe all of our staff now 
our, our regular county staff. Like I don't know that, and, and I wish Brenda were here and Casey, you might know, but I don't think the health department has anyone that is exclusively dedicated to COVID. I think just, is there one? And is that Christian? Okay, so our, our last dedicated COVID response member is going to med school at the end of the month. So he, mm -hmm. he won't be here, but yes, I, I, um, I, this is largely procedural in nature. I mean, in theory, if this ramped back up, we could do another declaration and be right back here, but I, I don't, we don't anticipate that. This is part of going from a pandemic to an endemic and just normalizing it, so. And some of the things that this got us was uh, PPE and equipment from the state as well, and providing some of that equipment that the state had down to, down to the local level. Um, there's just, now that everything's kind of caught back up and the, the, the need for, you know, that the rationing and stuff like that has, has gone away, the needs are being met with everything that we need, so. I think we're in a real good spot for this. This is substantially similar to, you know, we do disaster declarations often during weather events. So like severe flooding, that, that is what allowed or helped David obtain his FEMA reimbursements was the fact that we had an open disaster declaration. So um, this was just unique in that it was open for <laughs> two years, two months, basically, so. Uh a long time coming that uh, it's I'm glad we can do that today any other questions of Tom positive response with I make the motion to approve the resolution or appealing and rescinding Franklin County resolution number 2015 every resolution relating to the COVID-19 public health emergency so moved and amen second Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. Next item up for business is uh, consider the approval of rezoning application 2203-1553. We get the honor today. <laughs> So this one is um, a father and a son purchased this 40 acres together, and now they're just wanting to split it into two 20-acre tracks, so they each own a 20 acres. Um, the son plans on selling his 20 acres, but he wasn't sure if his father had made a decision on his 20-acre tract. Um, we sent notice to seven surrounding property owners. We didn't receive any comments for or against it. There was no one at the hearing uh, post to it, or and the planning director did recommend approval of the rezoning, and the planning commission did recommend approval by a vote of five in favor and one opposed. Any questions about this? Positive response as I make a motion to approve rezoning application 2203-1953 Thompson to rezone approximately 40 acres from an A1 agriculture district to an A2 transitional agriculture district and to amend the official county zoning map accordingly. Do you remember what the opposed objection was? Um, <clears throat> basically, he felt that the 40 acres as a whole is 100% agricultural. I got you. And he was concerned that if you split it into two 20s, most people can't have a productive agricultural um, land, so he was opposed to it. Trying to, you know, based preserve, on the preserve. county wanting to preserve ag land as yep. much as possible. Yep. Questions? Entertain a motion. So move. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Waymar? Yes. Mr. Stottlemyer? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Next item is consider approving rezoning application 2203 1954. 
Bridge on approximately 7.29 acres from an RE residential estate district to an A1 agriculture district. So back in July of 2018, a rezoning and lot split was approved um, to split this seven acres off from the remaining about 51 acres to sell the 51 acres. However, that sale did not go through. So the family member that owns the seven acres purchased the remaining 51 acres. And she came into the office wanting to get an agriculture affidavit to build a barn on that seven acre tract. Um, it's not an agricultural tract since it's you know basically under 40 acres. Plus, she couldn't meet the setbacks required to put that barn in. Um, a, as you can see on the aerial photo, there's a lot of floodplain on the north end of that. So she was very limited on the amount of space to build her barn. So they decided to go ahead and do a boundary line adjustment and merge it all back into one large tract. Um, there's a lot of ground that they also farm around there. So she was kind of limited so she didn't take that out of production. So um, the planning director recommended to go ahead and do the boundary line adjustment and the rezoning. And we sent notice to 12 surrounding property owners. No one you know, commented for or against. No one appeared at the public hearing. And the planning commission did recommend approval by unanimous vote of those that were present at the meeting. Any questions? Positive motion on this matter would be the region on approximately two seven point two nine acres from RE residential. This is application number twenty two oh three dash nineteen fifty four uh, did did occur to region on approximately seven point two nine acres from RE residential estate. District to A1 Agriculture District. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Stoltenberg? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Okay, this next, next item is consider approving rezoning applicant 2203 1956. Smith to rezone approximately 61.64 acres from an A1 agriculture district to an A2 transitional agriculture district. So the planning department received a copy of a deed back in October of 2021 that was transferring about 60, approximately 62 acres um, in the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of the section. Um, the deed was done without the approval of a lot split, and since both remaining tracks were under 40 acres, they no longer complied with the zoning regulations because you need a minimum of 40 for the A1. So the applicant is requesting to split the 61 acres into approximately two 30-acre tracks, and two granddaughters are purchasing the one, each one is purchasing a tract so that the family farm will stay in the family as it has for several generations. Um, we sent notice to 12 surrounding property owners. No one made any comments for or against. The planning director did recommend approval and the planning commission um, did approve on unanimous vote of those that were present. Any questions about this? Yes, specific uh, motion be, I make a motion to approve rezoning application 2203-1956 Smith to rezone approximately 61.64 acres from an A1 agriculture district to an A2 transitional agriculture district and amend the official county zoning map accordingly. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stallemeyer? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Okay, next one is the uh, rezone approximately application number 2203 
1958, Wiseman to rezone approximately seven acres from an RE residential estate district to an A2 transitional agriculture district. Okay. KD. Um, in February of this year, um, an application was made to rezone this seven acre tract with the existing residents um, in order to sell it. A family member has now decided to purchase that house, but she would like to have at least 20 acres of land instead of just seven. So this is um, to rezone it from the RE back to the A2 and then a boundary line adjustment. Um, we sent notice to nine surrounding property owners. No one made comment for or against. Um, the planning director recommended approval and the planning commission also recommended approval by unanimous vote of those there. Okay, any questions? Okay, positive motion B. I make a motion to approve rezoning application 2203 1958 Wiseman to rezone approximately seven acres from an RE residential estate district to an AT transitional agriculture district and amend the official county zoning map accordingly. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Next item is granted Viesman, Dalton Hughes, and Grissa Ehrlicher, Ehrlicher, lot split 2202 1947. Um, the planning department received an application for a lot split from Mr. Hughes and Ms. Ehrlicher to divide 60 acres into a 20 acre and approximately 39 acre tract. Um, the provisions of the county subdivision regulations, um, it can be approved if the applicant dedicates additional right of way for road and utility purposes. So this is, um, the applicants are granting the west 35 feet and about the south 40 feet of this tract for um, public road and utility easements. And the planning director just recommends that the county commissioners accept that easement. Any questions about this? Affirmative motion be I make a motion to accept the grant of public road and utility easement from Dalton Hughes and Carissa Ehrlicher. We approve. Second. Hey, Janet. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Thank you, Dave, for Thank all you. those. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next item up for business. Consider an authorization of Barlow and West Engineer to complete the engineering design for widening of old 50. Go ahead and take it from here. Commissioners, um, we originally signed a contract with Barlow West Engineers to prepare a preliminary design report. Uh, for the widening of Old 50. Uh, that contract was um, a, for a fee not to exceed $280,000, $734. So they do it by the hour with that hard cap. Um, um, in the process of completing that work, they, they realized some savings there. So there's about $80,000 left in that contract. Uh, once they finish the preliminary design report that you all heard uh, here last week. Uh, we would like to utilize that, that remaining fee to have them design, finish the design on the first phase of Old 50 from Eisenhower Road to Homewood. Uh, they, they um, um, due to the work that they had to complete as a part of the preliminary design report, They've already established, established an alignment, uh, created their sheets. They needed to do those things in order to come up with good construction estimates and those sorts of things. So um, uh, we are realizing in this, this design phase the efficiencies that, that and the items that we've already paid for through the preliminary design report. So 
the fact that we're going to be able to get all of that preliminary work and a design for phase one within our original fee, I think, is a good deal for Franklin County. And I would uh, recommend us moving forward with that. Certainly. Um, I think this is a no-brainer. I mean, we've already approved the cost of the initial design work, but because this, I mean, it does go beyond the scope from a work standpoint, uh, we thought that we should bring it to you and get your express approval for it, but it is within the current contract price, so that is that is a very good deal. Yeah, and these, these dollars have already been budgeted and, 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 and accounted for in our, in our uh, list, so these wouldn't be new dollars uh, that we'd be spending on this. It just an uh, increase in scope for them. And, and I feel like I've been saying this a lot lately, um, but it, it's, I think it's good government. This keeps with our um, plan of getting design work and having it on the shelf ready to go so that we, if we can get, procure the dollars to do the project, we'll be ready to roll. And this keeps with that, so. Sounds like a good deal to me. To, uh, anybody else have any questions in favor of this? Cause the motion be I make a motion to authorize Barlow and West Engineers to complete the engineering design for the widening of Old 50 Highway from Eisenhower Road to Homewood under the existing contract and original fee approved on October 6, 2021. So moved. Second. Commissioner Saldemar? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. That concludes our business of the day. Now we'll go to staff reports. Uh, Derek, do you have anything else? Yeah, I do. Um, several things. One, um, Christy and I are trying to set up a meeting with Wellsville to advance discussions on the potential ambulance station. Um, it's looking like at this point, um, hopefully it'll be next week. And to be candid, it, it's my availability that's been the most problematic, but I'm hopeful that we can sit down with them next week. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, Janet and I started having our budget meetings with department heads and elected officials. Um, we had about a handful of them, and, and I'm pleased with how those went. Um, you know, I will tell you, and the sheriff's here, he can speak to that. Um, we are going to have departments that just with inflation, it, it's hard to keep. I mean, we did see a lot of flat budgets, but a department as big as the sheriff's, particularly in the jail with some of the, you know, the food and some of the services that we have to provide, it's going to be hard to, to be flat. Um, but certainly, I think Janet and the sheriff are going to work on trying to, to, you know, reduce or, or keep the increases as reasonable as we can. But, um, but I'm, I'm happy. Like, I'm, I'm happy with how those initial discussions went. Um, in terms of the budget, th this year is interesting. Um, we've talked about, um, talked a bunch about, wanting to be able to, you know, we've recently made our public works wages competitive, and we've talked about wanting to do that for, for all of our departments, which I think is, is a, a great endeavor. Um, I feel like part of my responsibility, in fact, one of my chief responsibilities is to um, present options to you that would mitigate that tax hit as much as possible. Um, we're not going to be able to do it entirely, but to keep that potential increase as minimal as we can. But to do that, there are a lot of things that are kind of coming to a head right now. I mean, we've talked about looking at our services and one of our departments in particular and whether or not we want to keep doing that. That's a discussion we're going to have to have soon and we'll be ready to. Um, but that is a potential option to save, you know, fairly significant money. We've talked about our ARPA dollars and using those to defee certain bonds. 
um, which I think would save a good chunk of money. And that's, we're gonna have to have that conversation soon, which kind of opens up the entire ARPA discussion and what you wanna do with those dollars. Um, we've got countywide software that um, Dustin and I have finished, finished our contract review. Uh, we're about to bring that back for your approval. So, so that's something that you know, we'll have to factor in increased maintenance costs for that. We've got our pay study going on. So we have to figure out like what is competitive. And before we get the budget for that, we have to determine what those numbers look like. And so, so that is going on and then you know, speaking of the ambulance station, that's a potential use of ARPA funds as well. So I say all of that, like, these aren't just individual projects. They are all very much intertwined and you're gonna have a lot of fairly, I would say heavy hitting items coming before you in the, you know, not distant future. So just wanna get you out ahead of that. Um, obviously, this is all happening at a time when, you know, we're, we're going to have a couple vacancies in administration soon. Um, I think on Monday, I want to have a discussion with all of you about uh, potentially retooling one of those and what that could potentially look like. Um, I think as part of responsible budgeting, I think we all need to look at, do we need all of the positions that we're budgeted for? Because we, we all hear the narrative like, oh, government's growing exponentially, it's getting bigger. I wanna be able to show like, no, we're literally, we're not getting bigger in people. Um, and part of that's looking at certain positions and there are gonna be several of them that we talk about. And one of them is in administration and I'm very comfortable saying we can remove it from the budget but I wanna have that discussion. So um, yeah, I've got, got a lot on the docket right now, a lot coming up, but I, you know, it's, I think the potential is there to find a lot of efficiency and, and you know, take care of a chunk of potential wage increases if that's what the five of you would like to do. I, I think that's all I have, so thank you. Thank you, Derek. And, uh, Pretty obvious that infl inflation is going to hit every the form of our economy, and, it's, and we're not exempt from that. So it's going to be a big part of our uh, budget this year, is considering inflation. Thank you. Uh, Casey, do you have anything for us? Yes. I need to add on to um, what Tom and Derek. Derek, we're talking about the health department. Um, they will no longer be administering PCR tests as of tomorrow. So they will only do um, home tests, and those are free. People can come get home tests at any time, or they can call to get an appointment. Um, but if you need a PCR test for travel, or you need a PCR test for a surgical procedure, or any type of procedure at the with a healthcare provider, then you need to reach out to that provider or a pharmacy to get a PCR test. Is there a spe specific number to call for our health department or just call the health department in general? It's the health department num general number, which is 229-3530. Okay. And people can call you if they needed a at-home test and come in and get it? Yep. Okay. Also, um, most people's insurance will send them um, so many free home tests per dependent or per person. Um, so you can check into that, um, and um, there's you can pretty much purchase them anywhere, but they're available free as well. Go ahead. Wait a minute. I talked to um, uh, Diane of the... Uh, Historical Society, and they said they're, they're making progress to getting everything boxed up and everything. Uh, are they actually moving anything yet? So they are making some changes. Actually, Brandon and his maintenance tech, Cody, have been um, working really hard. Like, there's a couple of offices there that had cabinets and such built in that have all been taken out because they didn't want them there. Um, and the front desk and stuff have all been removed. So we are pretty much out of there. Um, and they're gonna, I, they have some changes they wanna make before they start moving in. But I know they're packing and they plan on actually moving in June, I believe. Subject to the uh 
uh, the warehouse uh, building there at, at the old Crestview place. That subject came up. That's another thing to put on our on our plate. Talk uh -oh. about that at a future time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Okay. I did. I did talk to somebody over the weekend that said that her, their family had COVID and they called the health department to report it, and they were just like, "We're not." Yeah. So all of our reporting will be done by the state going forward. Um, we don't. We no longer get weekly reports that says there's this many yeah. right last friday was our last weekly report so if you read through that it kind of explained that they're only going to be doing home tests the biggest issue with us doing the reporting is that 90 percent of people anyways are doing home tests they don't want a pcr test um, and then they don't report the results so our numbers don't truly reflect anyway. numbers anyways so mm -hmm. yep thank you Casey. Tom, do you have anything else? Hope it's not severe weather or something like that. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to talk about that. We had our first uh, quasi-flood of the season. Uh, last week, uh, the Potawatomi came up to 21.4. Uh, it actually went over Douglas Road just a, for just a couple hours. And at Virginia Terrace, I was, we were kind of watching to see if it was going to go over because we want to see if our mitigation actually works, but we don't want to see it. That's one of those things that we spent money on. It was, whew. So it's one of those things is we want to see it, but not really. So we kind of monitored that. Uh, last week I went down and helped with Butler County for a couple hours for their Andover tornado. Uh, we have equipment up here that they called for, and I went down and did those just-in-time training so they can get their re volunteers registered and whatnot, um, see what they're going through and whatnot, any, any support that they need from us. All I just needed was our equipment, a little bit of training time. So that was a quick trip down and back. So that was a good thing. Um, the state's starting to get caught back up on some of the things that they do. So our emergency management performance grant, we actually got paid for uh, FY20. So it was 28000 and change. Um, they're now opening up so we can go ahead and get our money back for FY21. Uh, EMPG is a 50-50 match grant with the state and federal local or federal grant program so getting that that's a good thing getting that all back going um in the last oh, probably the last time i saw you i've probably trained about 60 responders on how to use a radio um you'd be surprised that people you know just want to pick it up and just talk on it and go with it but our system's a little more complicated than that and after they get through it they get more heads shaking up and down and understanding how it actually works instead of you know it's not necessarily just a walkie-talkie. It's a little more complicated than that, but um, it's also working on how to talk to each other and whatnot. So as we move forward on that, I think that's a, always a good thing to do, kind of go over. Um, I did a safety talk with Cedar Square on Friday. So tornadoes always bring people out to want to have a conversation. Uh, we haven't been in Cedar Square in a couple of years, so it's always good to go out and talk with those people. Uh, they're a feisty bunch, if you've ever been out there. They're always fun. Um, we're working, Derek and I have been working on the interlocal agreement that hopefully we can bring to you soon for Osage County to put stuff on our towers. Uh, I think that's going to be a good mutual benefit for that. And we've been working on that agreement. And the last thing is a hazard mitigation plan. So we have a current hazard mitigation plan. It's a regional plan. Uh, they're looking at getting ready to start the process to update that plan. And I got to send out some emails on that. Uh, that'll be good to get back into because we should on like David's or well, it's ours, but on that incident, there's 10% of that money goes into a pot for hazard mitigation. And we're the first people that can actually apply for that since we are ones that are directly affected to it. So we can actually get some hazard mitigation monies back to do mitigation things. So David and I kind of discussed what that would look like if we were able to go and shoot for that. Um, also your region or your Franklin County is good, but, a lot of our local partners. There's the Sunflower Safe Room Project for the Kansas Division of Emergency Management, which will help pay for a safe room. Um, but you got to have a, a uh, you have to have a resolution adopting the hazard mitigation plan. So I think all of our, a lot of our municipalities have that, but that's one of those things that we want to go out and make sure that everybody gets online and gets that, because that program's out there to help pay for safe rooms. So that's what I've been doing. Questions? Those kind of kudos that people in Andover called you for some help. Uh, yeah. Some of our equipment, that's 
That's pretty neat. We're, we're kind of a big family. We're kind of a niche group, and we're, we rely on one another. So it's it's kind of nice to be able to call. Um, they just all they needed was our equipment. So and I keep we keep it up to date. So it's all good. Yeah. Do we have tornado shelters in the city of Ottawa, or do we do we have a list of like so if I'm in Princeton and the sirens went off, is there any place for me to go or so, Ottawa or? We do not maintain, I do not maintain a list of shelters, and currently there's no shelters in the county, and I don't know any of any public shelters in any of our municipalities. Um, I don't like maintaining a list of that because i done that in the past and got burned mm -hmm. because insurance companies do not like people using their places as a community shelter. So as soon as I kept a list, they found out and they I, I removed places off the list. Uh, so I will tell you that there are places in the county that are probably open 24 hours a day that have a plan. Uh, you can check with those, check with those places. I think uh, there's local churches that also open their doors as well uh, and check with those places. Um, but currently there is no community shelters in the county that we maintain. Makes sense. Anything else? I would just provide a touch of perspective on our discussions with Osage. So they recently upgraded to the same radio system that we have, and they want to put some repeaters on our towers. The benefit for Franklin County is it will enhance our service in that part of the county. We've got repeaters on other towers, not that one yet. So this would be something they pay for. Um, they pay, I mean, we pay certain maintenance costs, but the maintenance of the actual new equipment would be paid by them. So it's, it's a good deal for everyone. So that will be in front of you at some point. We did that in, for Anderson County too, didn't we? Anderson County is right behind. They're, they're not signed on yet, but I imagine before the year is out, they'll be signing on and we'll be going through the same process with them. Good deal. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Uh, sure. Do you have anything? Good morning. Um, I want to start by, by uh, commenting also on the EMS resolution that you guys put this morning. Christine and her crew do a great job. Um, we work with them a lot, as Derek said, responding to crashes and then different incidents. And um, I came down here work-wise from Johnson County, where Johnson County Med Act has always been thought of as you know, as being the, the benchmark that you want, but we have the same quality of service down here. We have we have a very good EMS here and and, uh, and our first responders, and we appreciate the relationship that we that we do have with them. Um, also, last week I was not here. I was I had the opportunity to attend a uh, training out at the FBI Academy. Um, it's a collaboration of. Uh, between FBI and the National Institute of Corrections, with both fall under the Department of um, Justice. Um, it was it's the National Sheriff's Institute, which I had been to before. This is a new National Sheriff's Institute course um, focusing on jail operations. And so uh, I had the opportunity to be there last week. A couple takeaways that I had from that. Number one is as a county organization, we are sitting in a good spot. Um, we know that, but when you hear some of the struggles that other counties across the uh, nation have, um, it kind of feels good to know that, that we're ahead of where a lot of places are. And um, the other takeaway with that was I had some great ideas and some things to uh, some programs and some, some philosophies and things to bring back, um, which is the purpose of going to training anyway, if you don't gain anything that you can enhance your operations there's no point in going so it was it was very good for that and so we do look to to implement some of those things here in the near future and one of the really good things about it was because it was a uh, department of justice program um, it didn't cost the county anything for travel meals anything it was all covered under under that so uh, we appreciated that aspect as well um, while i was at um, that last week. It was just happened to be that it was National Corrections Week as well, and so it was a good time to be doing a, a jail uh, training course. Um, we didn't do a resolution for that. We typically try to wrap that in with the uh, law, with our law enforcement, one which will also be next week. And so, um, but our corrections staff does a great job. It's a, uh, it doesn't get all the glory that um, other 
that other public service um, jobs do, but it is tough work, and it takes a uh, it it takes a special person to do that. And it, it's um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pride in the people that we have working down there. They do it, and they do a good job. And um, it's it's a very necessary position to have. And so we we do appreciate all of our correction staff that work down there at the jail. So that's all I have, but I would stand for any questions that you may have of me. Thank you, Jeff. Christy, you have anything else for us today? Okay. David? So dust control got started yesterday afternoon. Uh, that, that work will be completed sometime next week. Um, Kello Construction is wrapping up the patching and overlay work. Uh, they're going to wrap up uh, the project, taking care of the uh, the landfill, the, the patching on either side of the scale, and also in the transfer station building. Uh, we will shut down the transfer station at noon on Friday so that they can they can uh, uh, take care of that work. Uh, should be completed no later than Saturday, uh, so we'll be closed. Um, uh, Friday at noon through Saturday, open back up on Monday. We've already alerted all of the trash hauling companies so that they can make appropriate um, um, alternate plans, and we'll work with Casey to get the word out on social media so that the public is aware that uh, we're going to be short, shut down for a short period of time so that we can uh, get that get those spots taken care of and, and uh, not have to deal with it for a few more years. Um, our second service truck and our sign truck are finally about done. Uh, we will, um, uh, we've got a conference uh, next week and we will bring uh, one, of the, one of them back with us and we'll get the other one uh, later next week as well. Uh, both of those uh, pieces of equipment, it's been, we authorized uh, the purchase of those just right out a year ago. And, and so, you know, we're just a little bit over a year getting them to arrive. So, but that, those will be uh, great additions to our fleet. That will also allow us to uh, start transferring some of the equipment pieces around and ultimately we'll end up with a, um, uh, items that we'll bring before you for uh, potentially auctioning off. And I'll work with the other department heads uh, to get a, compile a, a long list so that we do this one time um, we'll bring that before you for approval before we move on to any of that stuff. Um, also, the Lake Region Solid Waste Authority is scheduled a ribbon cutting for our new storage container. Uh, that's, uh, and the storage container is for the Adopt a Bike program. Uh, we're going to do that through the Chamber of Commerce. That was a way to make sure that we get plenty of public there so that we can really tout the program and, and get the word out a little bit more about that, uh, that good program. So that will be on March 27th at 8 a.m. Out, uh, out at the shop. And we'll... May 27th. May, sorry. <laughs> May 27th, uh, a couple of Fridays from now. Um, and we'll get the site cleaned up a little bit so that we can host that. And then finally, um, uh, we approve the uh, additional work on Osborne Terrace, they've already started the, in fact, they started the survey work last week, so they are pushing hard to make that July deadline. Happy to answer any other questions you may have. Okay, hey, Janet. As you guys know, I attended uh, my conference last week. Um, a lot of really good information shared um, on um, the Senate Bill 13 activities that we'll be participating in this year um, by the publications and the um, notices that will be going out to people's houses. So we had a lot of education on that. Um, just uh, a lot of election changes this year that we're looking at. Um, just. So we had a lot of training on that also. So anyway, it was a really good conference. And as you guys know, going three of you going to the, your conference the week before, it's a really good opportunity to hear concerns in other counties and, and put those on your radar in case they become concerns in our own. And, and also meet with other um, people in your position to to fall back on if you have questions to ask. So it was a really good conference. Um, we're throwing right back in to work this week. Like Derek said, we're working on the budget. We're getting a lot of work done on that this week. 
So um, if you guys have any questions or thoughts about that, um, we'll be bringing you your books, hopefully the very beginning of June. And right now we have those study, study sessions planned for the 13th and 14th of June. So you might want to put that on your calendar. That's what we're looking at right now for study sessions. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Jenna? Uh, yeah, I uh, attended the uh, matter of solid waste uh, annual meeting last week in uh, Garnett, Anderson County. And uh, I won't go over the whole list. We had a, a lot. We, we spent several hours going over uh, uh, our grants and our websites and our trainings. And, and we did have an election of new officers. If you all know J.R. McMahon from uh, Long time public work director in Miami County stepping down, and he will not be serving again. He's been our long time uh, president of the board of directors. Uh, David Lee will be the new uh, president and chairman of the board of directors from uh, for the Solid Waste Authority, and then I'll stay on as a management committee chairman for for the next year. Uh, we, uh, a few years ago, I know it just seemed like there was no grants, nothing going on. And since we put on our new coordinator close to two years now, she has just did a great job of finding things and working on things. We That job had been moved down from a 40-hour job to a 20-hour week job. And we have decided that as much as she's doing, as much as she's gaining us, uh, we increased her hours to nine hours a week, to 29 hours a week, and give her a dollar an hour rate. She well deserves it. Uh, I asked for the left of the, what we got and hadn't got back with me, but I know two, two or three of them right here in Franklin County. One of them I know, Williamsburg got the grant to do a bunch of new park benches, recycling for their park and so forth. The Wellsville School District got a $17,000 recycling grant we helped them get to redo the playgrounds and with a rubberized new uh, groundwork for safety. And the third one was we're working, it's kind of a partial deal between the county and, and uh, Lane Fair. We're kind of wanting to move into a, uh, so many of the uh, functions that go on, like chapter show, car show, fair, don't have a recycling problem them on site that they can actually recycle. And that's always been a big issue. Everything just went to the transfer station. Nothing ever was ever sorted. And so don't remember the total dollar on the green wall, like 30000 or something like that. I'm not sure it was even that much. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to get the recycling. They're, they're open, clear container with bags and everything. And then they're well marked on top. You know, you can physically see where people are putting it in there. The, the bank can just be taken off. You don't have to pull them out. You know, just pull them right out, put a new one in there. And we're going to start out with a link to make sure we're doing that, see how, how it works and goes. So, uh, like I said, she's working on a lot of grants and a lot of things right now that uh, I think is going to expand on the, the recycling part of it. And, you know, I think uh, most of the board members were very complimentary, I guess, to be the word, of the work she did in the last two years. And kind of brought out of the stagnant period that we all knew about grants and stuff for board. She was really thinking a lot about And working with all the IT directors in all the county, trying to get the recycling of well, all the websites and every county can see. What's going on throughout the whole six years? So that's all I got. Okay. Oh, yeah, I went to the chamber coffee last Friday uh, to introduce the new executive director at COF Services. And COF they kind of talked about um, what they've gone through with COVID for the last couple of years when you have uh, developing, when you have challenged adults who really don't understand maybe what's going on, um, kind of hard. And then, of course, they've had the same problem with everybody else as far as 
being able to retain or to uh, find new hires for their positions, especially the ones that actually live with the uh, in the apartments or in in the housing. Anyway, they actually just got some additional money from the state that they're going to be able to do increases across the board. So they were really excited about that. Um, the city of Ottawa had a three-hour study session on Monday. They're basically starting their budget process. Um, one of the things that they're doing besides the budget is they're considering selling some additional lots at Lakeview, Lakeside, Lake, Lakeside, I think, over at 17th Street off of, um, That's yeah. A good huh? That's a good idea. Yeah, I think at least this time, maybe three to five that they're going to do. Um, they're going to do them by auction, I think. Um, and then just a couple of takeaways from their um, budget. They are working on a pay study, and they're going to pay big money for it if they end up doing it, to do a pay study, because I think they're with everybody else. They had over a 10% turnover last year with their employees, so dealing with what everybody else is dealing with. They're thinking about hiring a, a communications director. Um, and then talking about vehicles, whether either they're not buying them because they're too much, you know, things that they've already budgeted for, but they're coming in like double budget or it, or they just can't, they're not available. Like they said, if they needed a bucket truck, there was not one available until 2026. And it's just, yeah. So everybody is dealing with it. All of their uh, departments are coming in with way higher um, tasks than last year. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out because money only goes so far. And you can only raise the taxes so much. So I think we'll all be dealing with it. So, um, And then the chamber had their board meeting yesterday morning. And one of the things they did is they established four ad hoc committees. And most of these came out because of the board retreat um, that we had. These were kind of like some top priorities. So they're going to have a committee that is, that is um, about marketing and Legacy Square. And then one of them is going to be about their building because Upstairs, it can either be apartments or it can be rented, and just to kind of see what would be the best use of the building itself. Um, they're going to review job descriptions and do position reviews, um, especially with probably their executive director uh, retiring within the next little bit, and then uh, a committee on bylaws. And that is it. Thank you. Cole, you have Hey, Dad, no. I might mention one thing. Uh, I don't have anything for today, but uh, uh, two Sundays ago, I went to the DAR, uh, Edward Hand chapter DAR here in uh, uh, Franklin County, and they uh, did a refurbish of the uh, Ottawa Indian Mission uh, pillars they have out there to go to the cemetery out there. Uh, right east of our land, landfill, and they dedicated them uh, after quite a bit of work. And, and uh, Wayne uh, Peterstadt gave a history of the Ottawa Indians that came to uh, Franklin County and dedicated uh, not only a lot of land for Ottawa and Ottawa University, and, and uh, it's a real good uh, uh, presentation by Wayne about the Ottawa Indians. and. So if you go out there by the old Indian uh, Mission Cemetery now, they've got the new pillars all uh, refurbished and uh, and looks nice. And they plan on doing some more stuff uh, out in that area for the Ottawa uh, Mission area out there. So do you have anything else on this, uh, David? Is there at the deal? No, they. You mentioned the the additional work. They they are interested in in uh, going in and sprucing that up and and uh, making some improvements to the site. Uh, this group is is pretty active and um, um, are actively raising money to be able to do those other those other projects. There was nothing specific as to what they wanted to do, but uh, they are going to be forging ahead with uh, making improvements out there. They have some additional work because I heard that there was some major vandalism at that cemetery. Yes, they did mention that, unfortunately. I don't have anything else. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Come on. Thank you. We're adjourned.